Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is blow. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first way you might hear blow used is in connection to the wind. So we'll use this verb to talk about uh, something that's moving or creating some sort of air current or flow. If you ever watch uh, meteorologists on TV, sometimes they'll say things like, the wind is blowing from the south or from the west, etc. A second way you might hear blow used is to mean to expel air through one's lips, right? So it's this sort of idea of, right? I can feel air coming through my mouth. A third way you might hear blow used is to mean to make a sound with an instrument or a device. Uh, for this particular definition, my mind immediately goes to a referee, right, who might have a whistle, right? And so, again, that uh, official is going to push air through his mouth, and using that particular device, we're going to make a sound, right? And maybe that's a sound to stop play. A fourth way you might hear blow used is a bit more informal, but it means to spend money recklessly. Many times as younger individuals get their first jobs, their parents or other adults in their lives might say things like, don't blow your entire paycheck on, and, and then they might name something frivolous, something they don't really need, but maybe something they want. A fifth way you might hear blow used is to mean to lose or miss an opportunity. I recently heard someone uh, use this verb to talk about it. So they were very excited about the possibility of a new job. They had an interview and they said, oh no, I blew it. I, I've, I've definitely missed this opportunity. I didn't answer the questions well. I've, I have missed out on this possible new job. You should know that blow is an irregular verb. To make the progressive tense, you're just going to add ing to form blowing. The past tense form of this verb has a different spelling. We're going to uh, switch the vowel. So the base verb blow has an o. We're going to switch that to an e to form blue. So the pronunciation of this is just like the color. Spelling is different, meaning is different, but the pronunciation is the same, blue in the past tense. The participle form of this verb is blown, so we're adding an N to the base verb. Now, this particular verb has so many different meanings, so today we're going to focus on looking at some more phrasal verbs using our verb of the day. The first phrasal verb we'll discuss is blow away. This means that uh, a person or group or maybe a team is beating a rival or beating some competitor by a very large margin. Okay? So this is not a close game or a close competition. Uh, an example of that, the U.S. women's soccer team blew away Thailand in the 2019 World Cup. Right? So this wasn't a, a close game. I have now sort of forgotten what the score was. I, maybe like 9-0 or something, right? That's a really large mar margin in, uh, in soccer. Another way we can use blow away means to impress someone a great deal. So an example. Wow, that candidate blew me away during her interview. Okay. So uh, someone might be, be saying this and, and sort of following it then with, we should really hire that person. She did such a great job during the interview. I was impressed. Both of my first two example sentences are examples of the simple past tense. So I'm describing completed actions at a known time. Another uh, phrasal verb you might hear is blow down. This connects back to the first definition of the verb that we looked at earlier. So um, the wind causing something to fall down, sort of forcing it down because generally it's so strong. An example here, the wind has blown down so many trees this week. 
This is an example of the present perfect. So we're describing something uh, that started uh, in the past. Maybe the weather is continuing into the present, and that's why we're, we're using this has blown down. The next phrasal verb we'll look at is blow in. This means that something or someone is arriving unexpectedly. An example of this, is there a storm blowing in? So kind of, again, arriving in our, our town, our city, our neighborhood. Uh, this is an example of the present progressive or the present continuous. Um, again, with this, this idea of something just arriving in uh, right now. Another phrasal verb you might hear is blow off. This means that someone is not keeping an, an appointment. This particular phrasal verb is also a bit informal, but uh, still widely used. An example might be, don't blow this meeting off, right? You need to show up, you need to be prepared, right? Uh, this is an example of an imperative sentence, a negative imperative. So I'm telling someone something not to do. The next phrasal verb we'll look at is blow out. This connects back to the second definition um, that we uh, talked about with air sort of uh, coming through or, or pushing out of one's mouth or lips. And uh, the exact meaning here is to extinguish something on fire using one's breath. Okay? So an example of this might be, after we sing, you'll blow out the candles on the cake. This is a pretty common tradition, uh, especially here in the United States and in many other places. Uh, we sing happy birthday to people. Uh, there might be candles representing their age and they're on fire, right? And then those candles need to be extinguished. Right? The fire needs to go out. So this is an example of a simple future sentence. So someone might be kind of describing uh, sort of the plan of what's going to happen in the next couple minutes. We've got a few more phrasal verbs to look at. The next one is blow over. This generally means something is uh, subsiding or passing over with little lasting effect. I'm going to use an example sentence here to help discuss the meaning question is, when will this scandal blow over? Okay. This is an example of simple future, right? And this, uh, I would say, is an, something that repeats, right? There will be something in the news that really shocks, it surprises people, people keep talking about it, right? And we sort of want to know, when is that news, kind of the all the attention, when is it going to die down? Right? And, and when are we going to sort of forget about this particular event? The next phrasal verb we're going to discuss is blow up. This can have a number of different meanings. We're going to look at four different meanings. The first way you might hear blow up used is to mean to explode. An example here, the bomb blew up with no warning. Right? It exploded. This is another example of the simple past tense. A second way we can use blow up is to mean to inflate something. Inflate might be a new word. Um, so think of putting air into something. An example here, the pressure was low, so I blew the tire up, right? It means I put more air in the tire. A third way we can use blow up is to mean to enlarge a picture. An example here, we should blow this photo up and frame it for a gift. This sentence is uh, using the modal should, so we're giving advice in this particular sentence. And then our last way to use blow up um, is to refer to someone becoming very angry. Uh, another way that gets explained sometimes is to lose our temper. An example here, their, their parents blow up over the littlest things. Okay? This is a simple present sentence. We are um, describing 
uh, a habit, a routine, something that repeats again and again. And what we're saying here is the this particular set of parents becomes extremely angry, even with little things. Right? That, that is their habit or their routine. Now let's take a moment to look at some words and a phrase that are related to our verb of the day, blow. And the first word we're going to look at is just the noun form of this word. So same spelling, same pronunciation. Like our uh, verb, this noun can have a number of different meanings. I'm going to discuss three. The first way uh, you might hear it used is to refer to the act of blowing an instrument or some device. Here's an example of that. If you hear three blows of the whistle from the lifeguard, there's a life and death situation. That's true. That's kind of a, a universal practice at, at many pools um, and even beaches, right? So if you hear sort of three blows through the whistle, three sharp sounds, right? They're alerting others, their, their fellow co-workers, um, that we have a very serious situation. A second way you might hear blow used is to refer to a powerful stroke. Um, and that's, uh, right, that could be someone kind of hitting someone with a hand, a weapon. They could be using some kind of object um, as well. An example of this, he suffered many blows to the head during the attack, right? So several times he was hit with these powerful strokes. Another way to use the noun blow is to refer to uh, something that is kind of a sudden shock or maybe a sudden disappointment. An example of this might be, the news that the cancer was spreading was a huge blow for the family. Right? So shocking news, surprising, and of course this would be really uh, sad news, right? You'd feel very disappointed. Oh no, my loved one is not getting better. Um, unfortunately, their uh, particular illness seems to be getting worse. The next word we'll look at is the noun blower. This is used many times to refer to mechanical devices that are, are used to create kind of a current of air. Many times uh, this is used to dry or heat something. You might think of a, um, a, many people use hair dryer, but you might hear blower used sometimes in connection to that. You might also hear it connected to the idea of a furnace, an air conditioner, right? So with the furnace, um, we, uh, my husband and I were talking a few days ago and it, we were wondering if there was heat coming out and he actually said it. Is the blower broken, right? Is there heat coming from, from these vents? Fortunately, it wasn't. Uh, we, we figured out our problem. The last thing we're going to talk about today is the phrase to blow off steam. So what if you hear someone use this, they're talking about relieving some sort of pent up feelings. And these feelings usually are, are more negative in nature. So as an example, let me tell you, I blow off steam with exercise. Well, there are times where I feel very frustrated or upset with something. I go for a walk, right? I, I need to sort of release those feelings. Others might do it through conversation or other activities, um, but it can be really healthy, healthy for us to sort of get rid of those pent up feelings so that we don't blow up. We don't lose our temperature or our t uh, temper and uh, sort of react in an angry way with others. I want to thank Robert again for today's great suggestion. I really appreciate everyone who watches and I hope you all have a wonderful day.